For the first time, RNA from an extinct species has been recovered. Using muscle and skin samples from a 132-year-old specimen of a thylacine, also known as a Tasmanian tiger. Scientists managed to isolate RNA sequences. This achievement shows that museum specimens around the world can provide new information about long extinct species. In a new study, scientists from the University of Stockholm isolated and sequenced an RNA molecule from a museum specimen of a thylacine that is over a century old. This material provides information about the animal's genes and the proteins produced in its cells and tissues. The scientists' achievement has important implications for efforts to revive extinct species, including both the thylacine and the woolly mammoth. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Genome Research. The thylacine, also called the Tasmanian wolf or Tasmanian tiger due to its striped color, was the largest predatory marsupial in modern times. Originally, it inhabited the areas of mainland Australia and New Guinea. But it was forced out of them in ancient times and the last known populations lived only in Tasmania. European colonization contributed to the extinction of the species. These animals were considered pests and in 1888 a bounty of one pound was offered for each adult killed. This was the beginning of their end. In 1936, the last representative of the species that lived at Beaumaris Sioux in Hobart, Tasmania, died. Understandably, their extinction irreversibly changed the local environment. But the natural habitat of the Tasmanian wolf has been mostly preserved. Swedish scientists even suggested in a press release that its reintroduction could help restore the former ecosystem balance lost after its final disappearance. But it wouldn't be easy. This would require thorough knowledge of the animal's genome. However, even this would not bring them back to life. It would also be necessary to thoroughly understand the dynamics of gene expression in relation to specific tissues and the functioning of gene regulation. And this, in turn, we could only obtain by carefully analyzing RNA. Perhaps this will become possible, and not only in relation to thylacines. Scientists have a well-preserved body of one of them, which is kept at room temperature at the Swedish Museum of Natural History in Stockholm. His age is 132 years. And it was the state of preservation of the specimen that allowed researchers to sequence the transcriptomy of its skin and skeletal muscle tissues. This was done for the first time in history. This, in turn, made it possible to identify the gene expression signatures mentioned above, which, incidentally, turned out to be similar to those present in modern marsupials. Moreover, the obtained transcriptomes turned out to be of exceptionally good quality, so much so that it was possible to isolate specific RNA coding proteins characteristic of skin and muscles. This, in turn, allowed us to assign those ribosomal RNA and microRNA genes that were missing. Obtaining RNA from historical samples was a major challenge because, unlike DNA, 
which is more stable and has already been extracted from extinct species that lived up to a million years ago. RNA quickly breaks down into smaller fragments outside of living cells. It is believed to be degraded or destroyed within minutes, said study co-author Mark Friedlander, a geneticist at Stockholm University. In the muscle samples, the research team found sequences corresponding to 236 genes, including those that encode actin and titan, proteins that enable muscles to stretch and contract. In turn, in skin samples, scientists found sequences corresponding to 270 genes, including the one that encodes the structural protein keratin. Scientists also found a small number of viral RNA molecules associated with this individual Tasmanian direwolf. The ability to trace and recover these molecules opens the door to the study of ancient viruses. The possibilities offered by this undoubted achievement seem enormous. We may be at the threshold of a new era in paleogenetics. Let us also remember that museums around the world have many long-dead animals on display in museums. And perhaps in the case of a significant number of them, it would also be possible to sequence their RNA. Perhaps we will also be able to sequence the RNA of viruses in a similar way. To the extent that we will examine their genetic protoplasts. Samples from the asteroid Bennu have reached Earth. The OSIRIS-REx probe delivered a capsule containing valuable samples from the asteroid Bennu to Earth. Scientists hope that analysis of the collected material will provide new information about the formation of the solar system. The capsule landed at the U.S. Department of Defense Test and Training Range in Utah on Sunday. Immediately after landing, scientists stepped in to transport the capsule as quickly as possible to a temporary laboratory where conditions were appropriate for this type of cargo. All this to minimize the risk of sample contamination. The capsule was connected to the flow of nitrogen. This is the so-called, nitrogen purging, as scientists call it. Was one of the most important tasks of the team tasked with recovering the capsule. Nitrogen is a gas that does not interact with most other chemicals. And its presence is intended to prevent terrestrial contamination, leaving the sample clean for scientific analysis. Congratulations to the OSIRIS-REx team on a fantastic mission that will deepen our understanding of the formation of our solar system. Not to mention that Bennu is a potentially hazardous asteroid. What we learn from analyzing the samples will help us better understand the types of asteroids that could threaten us, said NASA Administrator Bill Nelson. The capsule with samples will ultimately be transported to the NASA Johnson Space Center laboratories in Houston. There, scientists will open the container and extract and weigh the samples. Small fragments of the obtained material will be sent to scientists from around the world. The successful delivery of samples from Bennu to Earth is a triumph of collective ingenuity and a testament to what we can achieve when we unite in a common goal.
But let's not forget, while this may seem like the end of an amazing chapter, it's actually just the beginning of another one. We now have an unprecedented opportunity to analyze samples and explore the secrets of our solar system, said Dante Loretta from the University of Arizona in Tucson. After traveling billions of kilometers to the asteroid Bennu and back, the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft released a sample capsule into Earth's atmosphere. The probe was then at a distance of 102,000 kilometers from the Earth's surface. The capsule with valuable cargo entered the atmosphere at a speed of 44,500 km per hour at an altitude of approximately 133 km. Within 10 minutes he landed at a military training ground. En route, two parachutes were successfully deployed to stabilize and slow the capsule to a speed of 18 km per hour upon touchdown. Radar, infrared, and optical instruments in the air and on the ground continuously tracked the capsule. Within minutes, a team of investigators was dispatched to the landing site to check the condition of the capsule. After examination, the capsule was taken to a temporary laboratory. The successful return of the asteroid sample capsule is the culmination of a seven-year journey. The OSIRIS-REx Origins Spectral interpretation, resource identification, security regolith explorer, probe was launched into space on September 8, 2016. It reached the asteroid Bennu on December 3, 2018. But it began making its first scientific observations of the object while approaching the target. She accurately determined the shape and mass of the space rock, which helped in selecting a convenient place to collect samples. She detected traces of water there and determined that the subsurface layer of Bennu consists of weakly bonded rock fragments and contains many empty spaces. Discovered in 1999, Bennu is believed to be the remnant of a much larger space rock that collided with another, similar object. It is only half a kilometer in diameter and weighs approximately 85 million tons. Researchers describe it as a Class B carbon asteroid. They add that it is over 4 billion years old which means it comes from the times when our solar system was just forming. Bennu orbits the Sun every 14 months, rotating on its axis every 4 hours. According to experts, there is a probability that the asteroid will hit the Earth at the end of the 22nd century, exactly on September 24, 2182. This is one of the reasons why the OSIRIS-REx mission is so important. Learning about the structure of the facility will help develop a mission that can save humanity. After delivering the samples, the probe continued its journey to an encounter with another asteroid.